Victoria is a traditional mid-sized South Texas town. People would call Victoria conservative. People uh, go to church. People work hard. Victoria is an old, conservative place. They like the way things have operated in the past. People don't like change. Hey guys, how did court go today? It was good. It was, it was productive this morning. We played about half the cases out. Okay. Pam, how many of those are yours? Um, I have at least. I'm Constance Philly Johnson, criminal district attorney in Victoria County, Texas. As a young woman, I was a classroom teacher here in Victoria. I left that position and coordinated a program called Safe and Drug Free Schools. And in my mid-30s, got my law degree, came right back and went into practice with my dad and have been doing that ever since until I ran for criminal district attorney. Number 17 on this docket continues to violate his bond conditions. We can certainly give them the opportunity to be out pending the resolution, but if they can't follow their bond conditions, that's the way it goes. Yes, ma'am. I've long been a proponent of something called specialty courts. Specialty courts hold that person accountable for the laws that they've been accused of breaking, but they also seek to treat them in a little bit different lens than the traditional criminal justice system has in the past. We have two individuals on the docket tomorrow, Constance, so we're looking at treatment options for... All right, all right. That sounds like an appropriate resolution in that case. The DWI court program started over 10 years ago. I was a judge, I went to a training, and I thought that we could make a difference. When I was looking for a defense attorney, Constance was the only person, really, that I considered and thought of because uh, she's so well respected in the community. She has a long history in Victoria. And I knew that if she came out as an ambassador for this program, that that would give a lot of weight to starting this program. So the district attorney has a great deal of discretion in how they administer justice in a community. We had some very limited resources, and so I had to make smart decisions about the type of cases that we pursued and what cases we took to trial. Look. Where's that one go? The book. You drew your fish? No. I went so long without actually ever getting caught. And it all caught up with me quick. I mean, I had three DWIs in four or five years. I was just drinking all day, hanging out, and I ended up going to a little place down the road, and on the way out, I got pulled over. And I had my brother and my nephew with me which were both underage, I still didn't have a license. So then I ended up going to jail. I knew it was a problem, but I didn't care. I just really didn't, really didn't care about anything. My first experience with DWI court was probably in 2007 as a prosecutor. I'll be honest with you, I sat there at the first meeting, I looked to my left to the chief probation officer and I told her whatever happened to locking people up. And I stood up and I walked out. We had heard of DWI court when I was at the police department, but it was something that didn't really exist here. Just like a lot of officers, in the beginning of my career, I was very linear in the way that I looked at criminal justice system. You go out, you find a crime, you arrest a bad guy, you put him in jail, he goes to prison. Punishment feels good to us. It's retribution, and it is a part of our criminal justice system. I think the detractors of DWI court look at it very superficially. They just think it's a hug-a-thug program. The purpose of a district attorney is to change behavior through visiting consequences upon wrongdoers. It is the duty of the prosecutor to enforce the law and protect the community. I'm the two things a prosecutor must always be, without fear and without favor. This is a fairly law enforcement supportive community. Steve Tyler is more of a law and order candidate. He was known for being tough on crime. He described himself as, I guess, kind of like a junkyard dog keeping away criminals. 
Why jury trials? I trust the people because they're stiffer. That's why defense attorneys try to avoid them. That's why we go to trial to involve them. The DA prior to Constance decided that all misdemeanor DWI cases would be tried to a jury. Well, that was unsustainable. I think we came precariously close to losing the program. Along the way, I decided to run for district attorney, and so I think we were all secretly crossing our fingers that perhaps I would be in a position to better support the court in the future. Constance ran more on a platform of reform. She talked a lot about drug reform programs and addiction programs, DWI court. Uh, she also criticized Steve Tyler for not supporting and participating in the DWI court that she founded. I have the temperament to be able to tell when we need to be aggressive, but also when we need to treat things a little bit differently and embrace things like specialty courts. Mr. Tyler's never attended a specialty court meeting. He wouldn't know. When I think of Constance, I think of how calm she is. That smile, that nice, melodious voice, that is still there, but that is a spine of steel behind that. And in by no means does her demeanor give anybody permission to walk over her. We have to be open to other possibilities. We had to be strategic about the use of our resources. And I have to be able to get along with other people to be the most effective leader that this county deserves. I think in me, you have those qualities. And I look forward to giving you the leader you deserve. Of, of course, there were people during the race who were not supportive of Constance. It was a fairly close race. Um, when that happened, it was probably the most contested and interesting race that our newspaper covered and reported on. When Constance decided to run as district attorney, from what I heard at the debates, it was interesting. I believe that it was ahead of its time and Victoria County was not going to be ready for it. Well, she won, so it didn't matter if I was ready or not. I was going to have to take it. It had been our observation here in Victoria that first-time DWI offenders, by and large, don't re-offend. But there is a small population of that group that do. And of that small group, then there are people that are really struggling with alcoholism, and they're, they're dangerous. As a police officer, specialty courts are not something that you really think of instinctively. We're typically pessimistic about human nature itself. Recidivism is very high. You see the same people in jail over and over again. But at a certain point in your career, you find yourself asking, what is the root cause of this situation? And the vast majority of the time, it is some sort of substance addiction. The DWI court program is much more difficult than a probation sentence. It may last anywhere from a year to a year and a half if they are moving through the phases successfully they're going to treatment at least probably twice a week. The second phase, they're still being very highly supervised, so they're still seeing their probation officer a lot. We have structured our DWI court so that it doesn't preclude anyone from participating in it, whether they have money or not. We don't want it to be a, a pay-to-play type program. If you want to make a long-term change, incentives work better than punishment. They just do. Congratulations on your successful journey. Really proud of the work that you've put into this program. I know it's not an easy one, and I hope that you've gotten a lot out of it. The good work that we're doing here in Victoria County, it's unusual for a county our size. We didn't know that. We were just doing it because it felt right, and uh, we knew it worked. And so we've been doing that locally for 12 years, and we're really proud that you are a part of it. Good luck to all of you. God bless, and we're really proud of you. Thanks for all the hard work you've put in. Thank you. It seems as if everyone could relate personally on some level to the need for having something to support people when they're struggling. It's been a long road. And I remember when I first come in here, a lot of people told me I was lucky to even be in here, you know. 
And, and, and it was tough. A lot of the starting out's the hardest part for everyone here new. We waited till Constance got elected. And when she got elected, she one of the first things she did was re-implement the uh, rehabilitation over, you know, incarceration. We thought it was just everyday life to be living the way we are. And looking back now, it wasn't even, <laughs> it didn't even make sense to be how we were. It's a bigger picture than that. So I say thank you all to everybody. Hopefully I don't see y'all again. <laughs> if we didn't wait for Constance to be elected, I would have been incarcerated. I wouldn't have had the chance for the rehabilitation. Constance said that she took a chance on me being a felony case at the program. I hit the graduation. She said that, you know, she took a chance and she's happy that I saw it through. Clay Matthew Hinkie. We are trying to bridge this model and take it forward for, you know, other addictions. So that's what Judge Garza and I are working on, a drug court to mimic the way this program is set up for alcoholism. Just like in a, in a DWI court program, the judge has to take an active role in it. So we went to go look at a program. I talked to Ms. Johnson about it, and I told her that I was interested in it. I had uh, done some research on it, and it was something that I was open to. These are some of the things that I didn't want to consider as a prosecutor that I learned as a judge that I thought, you know what, this might be something that would help, especially the younger uh, offenders, stopping them from becoming repeat offenders. People are so short-sighted though, they assume that there's a certain type of person that struggles with addiction, and it's every person. If I didn't go to DWI court, I probably wouldn't be here. That's just a fact of the matter. That leads me back to a lesson I learned early on from my dad, is that the right thing and the popular thing are rarely the same thing, and those are the toughest decisions to make.